Hey y'all, happy Monday. Happy, happy Monday. How are y'all doing? It is crowning moments Monday. Okay. Um, and the topic that I wanted to briefly discuss with you today is, is shame hidden in any part of you? And really this crowning moment today, and for those that don't know what crowning moment is, you know, I'm just dropping some golden nuggets, wisdom, um, where I may talk about uh, someone in the Bible who um, had the courage to face their fear or somebody helped them through it and they experienced freedom. And as a result, um, they got their crown. Okay. All right. So as we um, allow courage to overcome our fears, you are then sitting in the position uh, and in the place that God wants you to be, right? As long as we're hidden as a result of anything, right? There's so many um, uh, reasons to remain hidden, right? Fear, anxiety. Um, some of us have become isolated, um, a recluse, um, skeptical of people, lack trust. And as a result, it's really placed us in a prison, Right. Sometimes we think, OK, well, I'm, I'm protecting myself, but I'm actually um, created a prisoner of myself. But it is time. Jesus said he came so he could set the captives free and even free from the mental torment that so many of us are experiencing. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. It's really just this topic today is just to get you thinking about, um, you know, your state of being. How has your state of being been? <laughs> OK, what parts of you are you hiding? You know, um, are you able to truly connect with the ones that, you know, the loved ones, the people that are closest to you, whether you're married or you're not married? Are you able to truly connect or are there some barriers to your connection and why, if so? Right. So I looked up the online definition of intimacy and it's defined as close familiarity or friendship. It's a closeness, like the intimacy between husband and wife. We've been doing this prayer challenge. We're doing it for the whole month of May where we're praying for our future spouses or our spouses. OK, so intimacy. Intimacy is like the closeness between a husband and wife. All right. It's, it's closeness and it, it could be closeness with a friend, a closeness with a parent. Intimacy. Right. So I was listening to this teaching one day and I heard someone describe it or break it down like this into me. I see. Right. So it's the inner parts. Those inner parts, you know, that you know about that uh, God knows about. It's the parts of you that you may show to a select few of people or it's the parts of you that you uh, may choose to remain hidden or you've closed off due to a variety of reasons. So many times we even lack intimacy in our relationships due to the fear of being vulnerable because of the past, because the past hurts or disappointments um, that we've experienced. So sometimes we end up being closed off while simultaneously desiring to be loved, desiring um, to be, you know, to develop a, a best friendship, you know, type of situations. It's like this, you know, it's like, oh, I feel like I'm on a double-edged sword, you know? Do I open up or not? Am I going to get hurt if I open up? Or do I, you know, should I remain hidden? Should I say yes to my calling? What if they don't like me? It's like this, you know, this dance that we're doing. But it's many times we're actually carrying um, shame or secrets from the past due to fear, due to the fear of being rejected by those that are closest to us. And again, whether you're even um, you're dating, right? You want to you want to get married. It, it could be a daunting journey, you know. And I'm going to share a little bit about mine. I remember dating my spouse, right? And I, we were in this honeymoon like stage, so everything seemed fine um, when we kept things above the surface. And I was afraid to go deeper, and um, I was placing like this pressure on myself to appear a certain way. I want it to appear um, perfect. <laughs> like I wanted to uh, maintain a certain image. 
you know, because I was thinking in the back of my mind, well, if he knew certain things about me, what would he say? Would, would he accept me? Would he reject me? All right. I, I really, you know, were trying to uh, pose or uh, put on a certain image. I really had placed myself in a prison. And y'all, it is time to be free. I'm telling you. It, so my issue was like, I felt like if I knew, like, well, if he knew you know, what I had been through, the sexual trauma or the sexual history and those things, would he still want to be with me? You know, and a part of uh, what was playing in my head were the voices of accusers that had told me, like I had a child before him. So they told me, oh, you know, because you have a child, you know, um, uh, you know, you had a child out of wedlock, you know, you're a statistic or nobody's going to want to be with you, you know? So I had these different messages plaguing, you know, it was like a plague, you know, like a plague of flies, flies, unwanted things, uh, just flying around. It's like, man, how do I get rid of all of these intruders? How do I get rid of these thoughts and these messages? But they were replaying in my mind. So it led me to um, not be intimate or develop intimacy, even in that courtship and that dating process. I kept things like above the surface, right? So not knowing if he was going to accept me, you know, so when he was asking questions about my past and we're getting to know each other, it led me to like, OK, I'm going to tell some fibs. I started lying about different things. I started lying about certain parts of my past because I just wasn't sure if he was going to accept that part of me. Because I had shame in those parts. Right. However, there is one day that the Holy Spirit um, who knows every part of me, who knew every part of me, knows every part of you. Uh, because there's no hiding from God, <laughs> um, you know, just really I had a strong visitation that day. And I, I felt this like submarine deep conviction, mind you, like I'm keeping everything above the surface. I'm, I mean, I felt that thing in the, the pit of my belly. Like, no, you're going to be honest. You want him to love you. He's going to love every part of you. You need to be honest, but he needs to be in choice as well. Right. So it led me to be honest. And I told him everything in stages and it was not pretty. y'all. It was it was difficult. Like there were tears. You know, I was anxious. I was sweating. There was mascara all over the place. And um, I just I didn't know if him and I were going to have a future at all. However, let me tell you, I did feel um, a huge sense of relief like that came that same day, but even weeks after that, it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of, I mean, it was tumultuous, but I felt relief because I was no longer carrying the weight of, uh, of lies. Right. Like, and it, it, it takes, it takes boldness. It takes boldness to be honest. So I knew I realized over time that it was less though. It was less about him accepting me. And it was more about me actually releasing the shame that I had been carrying in various parts of myself. It was really about me accepting myself and learning to see myself the way God sees me. Because sometimes we put that responsibility on other people and we get upset. I'm like, oh man, they rejected me or he, re she rejected me. He rejected me. And, you know, they didn't love me or, you know, this and that. But sometimes we, we've we already rejected ourselves. You know, we, we can be so used to say self-hatred and we're placing that responsibility of our peace of mind on somebody else. When the scripture says, such as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as long as we're lying to ourselves and carrying shame in any parts of us, we're not going to be walking in completeness or in wholeness. So it's going to be creating a barrier to be intimate, intimate later on with whoever you want to be intimate with. There, you know, they're even like develop a friendship, you know, it's like, oh, I don't, I'm afraid. I don't know if I can be myself or let my hair down. And I asked people, what would it be like to just be you? And, you know, uh, one lady told me, you know, I think there are like six parts of me. Everywhere I go, there's a different version of myself. You know, I just want to be me, you know, all across the board. You know, what would that be like? And obviously there's professionalism at work and, you know, there's going to be, there's, you know, a, a bit more freedom maybe when you're with your friends. But I think the point was just, I, I just want to be authentic more so. I want to be but who I am really 
made to be. Like, who am I? You know, she didn't know who she was. And it really, it takes faith and it takes courage. Certainly it did for me to decide that the parts of me, you know, that I no longer wanted to remain hidden in the past. Like I, it took courage to, to expose those parts. And it doesn't mean that you have to go into every single detail of every single thing. Right. But sort of the, you know, the, the information that it's like, OK, no, this is I do need, you know, as as uh, someone who is perspective partner or someone who I may connect with or a friendship, you know, um, that I may have uh, and it's, it's necessary to the health of that that friendship and the trust of that friendship or that future relationship. Uh, it takes faith and it takes courage to decide, you know what, I'm, I'm going to release the shame and I'm going to. I'm going to um, express this. I'm going to tell you about this. And I'm going to trust myself um, that I will be okay no matter what your reaction is to it. Sometimes that's the part. It's we don't trust ourselves to be okay with what their reaction is going to be because not everybody is ready for your testimony, but that's okay. Because either way, as long as you recognize that the enemy is defeated by it, you don't have to wait on somebody else's permission to share it. Man's rejection is actually God's protection. And not everybody's capacity is built for you. Come on. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So as long as we're stuck in the past or any part of you is stuck in the past, you are um, less available for the present or for the future. So how can you enjoy something now? a beautiful relationship, a new friendship, a, a, a new marriage or whatever the case is, how can you enjoy the now if some part of you is parked in the past or you're parked in shame or you're parked in guilt? You know, blaming yourself about, oh, you know, when I did this as a parent or that as a parent or this as a, as a spouse or when I was in this relationship or this person did this to me. If I'm parked in that unforgiveness or bitterness or even condemnation, it, it's, you know, where Jesus forgave you. But you haven't received his forgiveness. If you can't receive his forgiveness, I'm telling you, it will be hard for you to receive something from someone um, who's trying to develop who you're trying to develop something new with, All right? So, you know, so going back to that story, that courtship and that dating process, like I didn't just want um, my now spouse, we're dating at the time, I didn't want him to just love one part of me or the part of me that appears to be perfect. I really wanted him to have that choice of loving all of me. You know, I didn't want it to be anything superficial. It was going to be deep, right? And he could have left and that would have been just fine. But what was most important, again, is what did I say? Trusting yourself that you're going to be okay no matter what reaction you receive. And just loving yourself simply because God loves you and he loves you unconditionally. Your value isn't diminished because somebody rejected you or because somebody walked away from you or because they don't get your testimony or your testimony is too much for them. Your value isn't diminished as a result of that. So I started, here's who gets the, the crowning moment. The crown today is the woman who was about to be stoned. So remember she had committed adultery. So she was in sin. She was about to be stoned y'all. So all of her accusers, they, they like, they're holding rocks. I should have brought a rock. They're holding rocks, waiting to, to kill her, waiting to cast stones at her, right? And they're accusing her. They're, they're like, Jesus, she did this, she did that, right? And he starts drawing in the sand. Y'all, that's so deep. Let him draw, you know, uh, draw the, the picture of how he sees you. When, when you focus on how he sees you and the picture of you through his eyes, my God. Peace comes through the picture of you that he has, that he that he has created, the, the way he sees you. Peace comes through his depiction of you. So he starts drawing in the sand. He says, those without sin cast the first stone. 
So now, you know, they're like, hold on. Oh, well, I sinned. Oh, I, yeah, I sinned too, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, we did that last night, right? Yeah, we sinned. Yeah, sis. Yeah, 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 we sinned. Right, so they start putting their stones down and he's like, you know, he looks at the woman and he's like, where are your accusers? Where are your accusers? You know, so many times we're placing people on a pedestal, not realizing, well, they're not perfect either. Right. They have a past. They have sinned and they may not even admit it. But the scripture also says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So sometimes we actually become afraid and we're holding ourselves back. We're holding our destinies back. And it's like, man, I'm stagnant. I'm experiencing hindrances, discouragement and delay. Because we've been running away from the words and the accusations that we're anticipating people may have for us or that people may even have for us based off of what you did, based off of the mistakes that you've been through. But you can see in this example, your permission to be free and to love who you are comes with the forgiveness that Jesus wants to give you. And it comes with accepting his love for you. It doesn't come from people. It doesn't start from people. That's a divine gift right there. And once you get that permission and you embrace what he has for you, that is the beginning of your journey and your transformation. It starts with accepting the love that he has for you, which is unconditional. So I just challenge you to think about that and just begin, you know, um, inviting him into those intimate places, those inward parts of you where there may be shame, there may be bitterness, there may be unforgiveness, there may be fear, um, there may be anxiety, there may be sexual trauma, physical trauma, emotional trauma, the need to be perfect. Come on, invite him into those intimate parts of you that maybe you've closed off. He said, well, I'm what? I'm knocking on the door of your heart. I want to come and dine with you. I want to come in, right? Let him in, let him in. And if you need help with this process, don't hesitate to reach out to me, okay? Mark 5 and 34 says, Jesus said unto his daughter or the daughter, you know, uh, referring to a woman and as his daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and behold of thy plague. Behold of thy plague. He said, your faith has made you whole. Therefore, wholeness is what we should be aiming for. You know, our peace of mind so that we're not being plagued with shame or fear um, or past hurts. Wholeness. Wholeness is your portion. So I pray this blessed you. If you want to send this to anybody, if you believe it's going to be a blessing to them, please do so. Invite them to the group Courageous Christian Women Facebook group. You all got